Thank you. Uh, Senator Cantwell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks for holding this important and timely hearing. Uh, over the recess, uh, I held an AI forum in Seattle. Uh, Pacific Northwest Laboratory showcased its rapid analytics for disaster response, a tool that is a detection system for all hazards and important. It was used to assist in both uh, Ukraine and in some of the Maui aftermath. Uh, others in the Allen Institute for AI Environment have demonstrated how they're using satellite imagery to improve wildfire management, really important for us in the Pacific Northwest, also using it to detect illegal fishing in our maritime sector, very important issue to us in the Pacific Northwest and enforcement and surveys of uh, our land for conservation purposes. So we need to invest, I believe, in more innovation, and that's why we obviously are supportive of what happened with Chips and Science and now with AI for our competitiveness. The United States cannot, cannot slow down on AI as it relates to our competitiveness internationally and for national security reasons. So our national labs have assisted us in supercomputers, reliable and robust data sets. The U.S. Department of Energy and our national labs are essential to our leadership in artificial intelligence. So I wanted to ask our uh, panelists, you spoke about the need for U.S. leadership in this issue, um, uh, Secretary, Deputy Secretary Turk, and also I believe, Mr. Stevens, you mentioned lab supercomputers are positioned to create the tools for risk assessment to evaluate AI systems. So how do we, how, how do we get both NIST and DOE working together on these tool assessments in determining uh, what are true risk assessments, so they're identified, and what do we need to do to help build a workforce, particularly in skilling the workforce for AI, and either one, Dr. Stevens or um, Mr. Turk, either one of you want to start, it doesn't matter. Go ahead, Professor, you start and I'll back clean up. So we're, we're having good conversations with NIST about partnering in how to uh, take the assets of DOE and connect them to the analytical and uh, conceptual framework that NIST has been working on for AI risk management. So I think that is an ongoing conversation. Uh, they're participating in working groups that we've established, uh, consortia across the laboratories that are working on how we will do risk assessment for large AI models. So I believe that part is already moving, and I, I feel quite positive about where that's going. In terms of the workforce, I think the, the young people are hungry to work on AI. They, you don't have to encourage them. All you have to do is say, here is an opportunity, and they are there. I mean, our courses, any course at any major university that's on AI is going to be oversubscribed. So I think what we have to do is we have to provide enough resources that any student in the U.S. who wants to make a meaningful contribution to AI in the national interest has an opportunity to be funded to go to school, to go to graduate school, to do internships, and to participate. And that's going to require multiple agencies cooperating on that. DOE, of course, supports students and supports student internships, but in a very limited number. NSF, of course, can do it in a much larger number, but other agencies as well. We need a coordinated national strategy to build an AI workforce, and we need some leadership to organize that. Yeah, just two things to add. One, uh, boy, what a gem we've got when it comes to AI and everything else in the Pacific Northwest National Lab, whether it's uh, some AI on a drought study or with vaccine development. Like, there's example after example coming out of that lab, of course, working with Argonne uh, and others of our national labs as well. Uh, I think the uh, interagency partnership here is going to be absolutely key. Uh, Professor Stevens outlined what we're doing with NIST, and we need to do even more with NIST on the risk framework along those lines, but it's uh, NOAA, it's uh, agency after agency that we've got good partnerships with, and I think because we have the exascale computing power, because we have data, because we have these other facilities that you, uh, not only with your role in this committee, but your role as chair of the Commerce Committee as well, have been working for so many years to make sure we've got these capabilities that can help work with partners throughout the interagency, and we just need to leverage that. We need to take full advantage of that. And do you agree with Dr. Stevens about the workforce issue? Com completely agree, and rightfully, for you to focus on this, uh, Senator Hirono asking questions about this, we all need to focus on the workforce. And 
Uh, I know I've talked to a, a number of folks. They want to work on AI, and they also want to work uh, uh, the private sector is great, and we need talent in the private sector, but they also want to work in the government and take on some of these public challenges as well. We just need to make it attractive to them in all sorts of ways so that uh, we can compete. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Senator Hogan. Uh, 